Now, Education Minister Stephen Lecce's office has announced some plans to help some parents should schools be closed next week. Health and child care workers will be eligible for free care for their elementary age kids starting Monday through the duration of the strike. The minister's office says changes have been made to allow day camps and rec programs to provide care while schools are closed. Also, licensed before and after school care programs will be able to pivot to offer full day programs. Let's talk more about this right now with Education Minister Stephen Lecce. Minister Lecce, thanks for your time this afternoon. Appreciate this. I want to get into the child care situation in a bit, but first I want to talk about the here and now, the negotiations. The clock is ticking ahead of this now Sunday 5 p.m. deadline when we're going to find out. Can you describe at this point the urgency, A, that you feel as Education Minister, and B, the urgency at the negotiation table right now? There is a profound level of urgency to get a deal because I think many families are currently scrambling to find uh, care for their kids on Monday, uh, particularly those in the essential service economy and just a lot of single parents, low income families, people that don't have the ability to stay home every couple of weeks because the union continues uh, to pursue higher wages in the backs of, of families. You know, we have, Nick, provided and fulfilled our end of the bargain. We withdrew that legislation. We increased their wages significantly. We've gone to a flat raise. We protected their pensions and benefits and the sick leave that is materially, that is objectively the best in Canada. And so we are doubling down on all efforts to get a deal. It just requires the union uh, to accept the good proposal before them and not to walk out on kids on Monday. Obviously, the uh, secondary message today is that we are ready to pivot should we have to on Monday so the kids are learning in live synchronous learning by their educators. We've asked school boards to ensure nutritional programs continue to be provided, access to mental health workers, uh, including uh, supports for special education needs. What we're trying to do is send a signal. We are ready to pivot if we have to. Technology tablets are being uh, distributed ahead of time so that this is a seamless experience, appreciating that this impact is so real on so many people. And it's unfair that you, the people of Ontario, are again in this situation, especially given the good faith efforts of government to get this right. Well, well, so. the government, it's interesting, right? Because, you know, a couple of weeks ago when the threat of the strike was here, uh, you know, as, as you highlighted to us, I suppose it was earlier this week, you talked about how you've upped the offer. We understand from CUPE, not you, but from CUPE, that maybe you're in and around the 3.59% increase uh, each year over four years for the contract, significantly higher from where the government sort of started negotiations. So the threat of a strike seems to be working from the CUPE side of things. So here we are again. You've also talked, though, about being responsible with taxpayer dollars and how this, you know, sets a potential, you know, you know mandate for other education unions across the province. So does the government have much more wiggle room here? Can you up the offer at all? Or where does this leave us if we're at this kind of the brink again? You know, I think QP needs to understand um, what they've asked of the government and what's been achieved to date. They asked for a flat rate. They asked for higher pay. We added $335 million more. They asked for protection of their benefit program and health uh, benefits and the pensions, we've done that. Uh, and we're going to increase workers within our schools in addition to the 7,000 to date. I think what people are increasingly realizing is what, you know, or the, the question that comes to mind is why are we here? We have been able to move on the significant asks. The union has not made any concessions at all. They have an obligation now to do the right thing for kids and stay in the classroom. They should not be pursuing a strike on the backs of our kids, which is they're the casualty, because they want even more money from the people of Ontario and the tax dollar. Because you are right, Nick, what we sign with CUPE sets the floor with teachers and right across the public service. Billions of dollars, and these shouldn't be abstract concepts. We're going to have to pay these bills. We're entering some real economic difficulty uh, perspective recession globally. We've got to be responsible. But we also thought that the proposal we brought forth has significantly stepped up. We need the union to step up, to stay at the table and not to walk out on Monday because the casualty of that is our kids. Now, in the meantime, we are ensuring that workers in this province have access to care. If you are a health care worker right now, we want to shore up our health care system because we know that they've been going through great levels of stress and difficulty. And so today we are going to ensure the doctors and nurses and PSWs and health care providers, those that work in long term care, hospitals, retirement homes, uh, applicable congregate care settings, that they actually are going to be able to get access to free child care, uh, both at home care and child care settings starting Monday for free. We want our health care workers to know we've got their back. This is unfair to them, uh, especially as they deal with great stress. But we have set up a system 
that is being implemented to provide some stability to those critical workers so that our hospitals and our other uh, uh, medical systems uh, could maintain their staffing and continue to provide those critical services. Nick, we're also ensuring that all families in Ontario have access to uh, recreational programs. Essentially what this means is that uh, during the school day, rec programs can't operate because they can't when a child is in school. We have removed that regulation to essentially help uh, kids uh, and families have more options. So recreational programs, childcare programs, um, day camps, all of these types of initiatives will now be allowed to open all day. We've had amazing uptake you know, YMCA and other organizations are sort of uh, interested or already stepping forward to say, we like to provide uh, camps that could allow for live learning, keep the kids busy, physically active, socially interactive with other kids. We think that's really important. So we're do taking all this action on the premise that we're gonna be ready on Monday. We've got the backs of these parents and we're gonna stay at the table. Worst case, uh, if we don't get a deal, then we're going to continue to make sure that the school system is there for our kids, especially the most vulnerable, and they continue to learn live in front of their educators through synchronous learning. But the, the, the objective is to get a deal. The objective is for the union to stay at the table and not to walk out on Monday. And if you don't, Minister, is there any back-to-work legislation possible? Is the notwithstanding clause another possibility? Yeah, no, no. You know, we're not going to be introducing another bill like 28. We made that commitment and we're going to fulfill our commitment. We, in fact, the first day back when the legislature resumed on Monday, we passed and revoked that bill. That was our obligation. You'll remember, Nick, they, the union said, look, the government has to withdraw the bill and we'll withdraw our strike. And then two days later, they announced another strike notice to take effect Monday. So I think a lot of people are trying to understand what is motivating this, given that there has been good faith efforts by the premier and government to get this right. Kids deserve to be in school. There is nothing more essential for these children. And we know how difficult it has been. We recognize the mental, physical health impact and the academic regression. And I just believe in the hours leading into the weekend that the union should hear uh, from the parents out there who are speaking to me saying, look, my kids have to come first in this debate. And they're always the casualty. They're always sort of the secondary priority. It's all about it's all about salaries until the last minute when there's an attempt to talk about anything but salary. And I think a lot of parents recognize what this was about. Uh, pursuit of higher money, more wages, and the government was able to demonstrate our commitments to keep kids in class. I need the union to fulfill their end of the bargain, to stay at the table, and to work with us in good faith to get a deal through the mediator. I, I just think right. the, the interests of children need to come first. Okay. And the data on mental health is clear. These kids need to be in front of their educators. They need routine and stability. And there's already been strikes in this province. We just had a pandemic. And I think if this is about the kids, Nick, then we're going to stay at the table. We're never going to walk away from kids. All right, that is Education Minister Stephen Lecce joining us on this Friday afternoon, potentially a couple of days out of a strike. We know the deadline is Sunday. Thanks for your time this afternoon. We'll see where this goes.